Not all whole life insurance is created equally. In this video, I'm gonna cover the different ways that you can utilize whole life insurance, the different types of whole life insurance products there are, how you can utilize them to achieve your financial goals and ultimately maybe some of the areas that you should look to avoid when you are looking to potentially purchase a whole life insurance contract. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell, that way you're notified every time I launch a new video. Let's get into it. Hey, what's going on, cash flow hackers? It's Chris with Life 180, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about the five different types of whole life insurance that are out there. I'm gonna go through some basic overview. The goal of this video is to not do a super deep dive, even though sometimes that's hard for me. Uh, it's not to do a deep dive, but it is to give kind of an overview on different ways that you can utilize whole life insurance and uh, to get you to see the fact that not every whole life insurance product is created equally, created with the same objective in mind, or like created to solve the same problem. And so um, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to go over uh, the different types of designs and products and, and use cases of whole life insurance. Uh, that way, maybe when you have a better understanding, you may, you know, figure out for yourself or for a family member uh, that this may be a good fit or, or you realize why maybe you have the wrong product or uh, hopefully uh, you, you'll just learn something through it, right? And so uh, let's just get into number one now. Number one is let's just call it a traditional full base policy. Now, here's the deal. These are the products that Dave Ramsey and Susie Orman love to hate. Uh, they are uh, the products that are high in fees, that don't gain cash value very fast, now, from a long-term perspective, if we're looking 20, 30 years down the road, um, these policies are gonna perform really, really well. However, um, they don't have great internal rates of return. You are gonna be looking at about a 15-year period before you break even on the cash value that's available inside the policy and the cash that you actually contribute to the premium. And so for most people, that's too long of a period of time. Uh, it's one of the reasons that Dave and Susie hate these things, right? Because it takes too long uh, for your safe money to build up. And from that perspective, it doesn't look like a very good investment, right? And so while I always kind of tell people whole life insurance isn't and never should be looked at as an investment, um, you know, this is a lot of times when we talk about the structure of people's financial lives, uh, whole life insurance is a very expensive form of insurance because let's face it, for 15 years, if you don't have a lot of liquidity of that money uh, when you need it the most, then it, it's just really expensive insurance. And so from that perspective, this is why I always kind of say like, I disagree with Dave and Susie because of the fact that like they're so wrong on all the different ways whole life insurance can be used. But I also agree with them uh, in this way, if people are looking to buy life insurance as a savings alternative and then they buy a traditional policy, because they were sold on the long-term cash growth of it and they buy it for that reason, um, then you know I'm, I'm not in alignment with it. The, the one caveat I would say to that is there are certain situations where having a good base whole life insurance policy makes sense, right? And so I will say that, um, but typically it's in your higher net worth uh, area for people, uh, not the middle class. And, and that's what I will say from there. So that is number one, a base life insurance policy. The second type of whole life insurance is final expense insurance. Now, there is a lot going on online right now about final expense insurance. In fact, we are starting at Life 180 Insurance Agency, we are starting to offer more final expense options because of the fact that, um, there, let's just face it, it, there's a need for it, right? And, and it is exactly what it sounds like. It is designed not to be massive coverage, not to be uh, passing on huge generational wealth and to do all the really uh, cool strategic things that we talk about all the time. It's designed to be able to cover final expenses, to be able to cover the end of life stuff. Typically the policies are $50,000 and less. Typically the policies are gonna be sold to uh, individuals who are older. Uh, there's a simplified component to it, meaning um, the, the underwriting process is not as stringent. Um, there's not as much risk uh, to the companies because of the fact that we have smaller uh, death benefits. And not only that, is that the cost of final expense insurance per $1,000 of insurance coverage 
is much more expensive than other types of insurance. So not that that's bad, you know, remember there's no free lunches in this world and it's all about risk reward. So if the life insurance company knows that you're getting this policy and you're older, uh, they know why you're buying it. Uh, you have to understand the risk to them. They have to actuarially base this out based on the clientele that they're selling it to. And so we're going to be doing more videos on final expense. So if you haven't already, subscribe at the bell that way you're notified because as I, as we're opening up this kind of final expense division behind what we're doing it's never going to be like the foundation of what we do uh, but it is one of those things where a lot of people are asking about it you know we're helping a lot of people in their uh, 30s through mid 50s uh, even mid 60s and those people typically have older aging parents that need uh, that that are looking and are interested in final expense so we've been getting a lot of comments and questions and responses about that. And so, um, you know, that is, that is that. So I'm um, going to mute my computer there, but, um, so final expense is number two. Number three is limited pay whole life insurance. And what do I mean by that? I mean, you could do a 10 pay, a 15 pay, a 20 pay, Every company operates a little bit differently, but the concept of a limited pay life insurance policy is most of the times, whole life insurance will what we call endow at 121 years old, right? And so um, what does that mean? It's going to endow at 121. If you live to 121 years old, you get paid the death benefit while you're alive. Now, most companies, what, what they do is they have full pay options and you can pay on that policy uh, until you're 100, until you're 121. And that is what it is. But the problem with that is, is not everybody wants to make premium payments while they're in retirement. Because let's face it, when you hit that stage of the game and cash flow uh, is constricted in any way, shape, or form, you probably don't want to continue to make premium payments. And if you're looking to just save up and get an emergency fund and do some stuff like that, maybe you know it solved your financial need and you just want to have it there. And uh, and you don't want to have to be on the hook for a big premium payment for a an overly extended period of time. I've got a lot of videos explaining, uh, you know, I just did a video and I'll put it on the end screen here about um, how long should you fund a whole life insurance policy. I think if this is something you're attracted to a 10, 15 or 20 pay, for instance, um, I would encourage you to watch that video on the end screen because it's really powerful in educating you how whole life insurance works from an efficiency perspective in the later years of the contract. But like, I, I understand uh, that some people just want that 10, 15 or 20 pay. Now, what are they doing there? You, there's companies that have what they call the L95 policy means that you're paying through 95 years old. Doesn't mean you're contractually obligated to pay that whole time because there are things you can do. You can do what's called a reduce paid up um, where you just reduce the debt, death benefit. The life insurance is completely paid up. And when you do that, um, you're, you're putting yourself in a position where maybe you lose some of the living benefits, but from a premium contractual perspective, it frees you up and it creates that flexibility. You can do things like premium offsetting, using a partial cash surrender and utilizing uh, the dividends to pay the premium. Uh, once again, there's no guarantees behind all that, but there is flexibility. You could do all these different things. The thing with a, a limited pay policy is that it truly pays it up and it comes with all sorts of benefits. Um, all the, the living benefits and everything that you would have in other policies, you get that. But, it, but basically what they do is they compress and they design and the way the mech rules are, they're allowed to jam a lot more cash in there. They're allowed to be a lot more efficient um, and you can pay for a 10 year period. And the good news is at the end of that 10 year, uh, at the end of those 10 years, you still have the living benefits and, you, and the life insurance is completely paid up and now you have a, a pure banking account on steroids. The downside to that is if you did a 10 pay, you are no longer, you are contractually unable, even if you wanted to, you are not able to keep making premium payments in that. And that's why I encourage you to watch the, the video on the end screen, because I think when you realize it, you're not going to want to stop as long as you have cash flow. Who's a 10 pay good for? A 10 pay can be really, really good for somebody who's 55 and they know they want to fund until they're 65. It's going to be one of the most efficient contracts out there. Who's a 20 pay good for? If you're 45, want to pay to 65, that could be really, really good. Now there are other ways to design other contracts. Uh, there are certain companies that would have like uh, a pay to 65 option. So if you're 
37 and you want to pay to 65, there's options out there and then it's fully paid up at 65 and they just actuarially build in all the costs and the fees and then you can optimize the cash uh, accordingly, right? And so those limited pays are just great options and uh, it's, it's important to understand that they're out there. Um, I think it's one of those areas that a lot of people lean on a little too quickly, a little too easily and don't learn kind of the benefit of, of funding these things for as long as possible. Um, however, I would also say that they definitely solve a lot of problems for the right person. So um, that, is, that is that. So the fourth type of life insurance, whole life insurance, is simplified issue life insurance. And um, this, is, this is something a lot, of, uh, a lot of companies will offer a simplified issue policy. Uh, the limitations, it's very much like final expense insurance. Um, but this is for typically a younger individual. Maybe you have health issues. Uh, maybe you just want to get more of a simplified issue policy. It doesn't mean it's a guaranteed issue. It just means it's simplified. It just means that uh, if your health is a little borderline, uh, if you want to go through a little bit of an easier underwriting process, you don't want to do the medicals, you don't want to do all that stuff, well, then you can go the simplified issue route. There's a lot of companies that do it. Like I said, a, most companies will have a simplified issue policy. However, once again, nothing in life is free. So if you go that direction, these in insurance companies understand that the people who are going that route typically are going to be higher risk and therefore the cost of insurance is going to be more expensive. You know, the, the, remember everything done by an insurance company is actuarially driven. They have these people who are in these back rooms who are running these calculations and they, they may not know when you're going to die, but if you're one of a thousand people that looks like you, they know when one of you is going to die, right? Like that, that's just how this works. That's actuarial science when it comes to whole life insurance and just life insurance in general. And so simplified issue could be a really uh, powerful, tool for the right person to solve certain needs. Um, but I think it's important to understand that it's not guaranteed issue. There are still underwriting processes. It's just simplified. It's going to be a little more expensive, but the parameters on if you can qualify or not are going to be a little wider and a little easier to qualify for. So that's that. Now, the fifth type of policy is my favorite type of policy, and that is a high cash value or banking style policy. And so the reason is uh, that I love these is because it's basically a savings account on steroids. I'm a big believer that a, a high cash value policy is the only financial tool in the world that will make sure what you want to happen will happen when you want it to happen, whether you're here to see it or not. It's a savings account on steroids. You save money in, you're highly liquid right out of the gate. Um, you know, talking 60 to 70% liquidity of the premiums that you put in and more. You can even get up to 92% liquidity year one based on how you fund the policy. Now that's not possible for everybody, but if you have the right amount of money to put in for a lump sum and you uh, wanna really maximize and optimize the policy, you can literally get up to 92.5% liquidity without mecking the policy. And a mech is if you, if you avoid mech, that means you keep the tax benefits. If you mech and create a modified endowment contract, you lose the tax benefits of the policy. And so that liquidity is key. And when you, when you do this the right way, you can even have it to the point where whatever your premium payment is, the policy is growing by greater than the premium payment starting in year two. And so I don't know about you, but to me, that's a, an extremely powerful tool. I think it's one of the most misunderstood tools on the face of the earth. Uh, I am really, really passionate about helping people structure their financial life with safe money, utilizing this type of policy as the foundational cornerstone asset of their life because of the way that it can solve multiple problems for you. It could be a reserve account. It could be an opportunity fund. It can be an emerg emergency fund. It could be a capital account for your business. It can be a real estate investment holding tank, a day trading holding tank. It can be all sorts of different things. It can be uh, a way that we can utilize it for real estate investing while we're working, and then we can utilize it in retirement uh, as a volatility buffer. There's all sorts of different ways and strategies and flexibilities around this. Plus, it gives a great death benefit and it creates the legacy play. Uh, and rather than saving money in a savings account, saving money here is just a way to increase the efficiency of your financial life. If you wanna learn more about that, I'm actually gonna put the infinite banking playlist on the end of on the end screen here as well and that will give you much more information about how these policies can work how they could be designed and how they may or may not fit into your life i think it's just one of those areas you got to educate yourself on so those are the five different types of whole life insurance policies uh, i i just 
like I said, number five, uh, the infinite banking, that is the foundation core of what we do. But it doesn't mean that the other policies are not the right fit for people at certain times. The one that I would say we use the least is the traditional life insurance policy that Dave and Susie love to hate. It takes a really unique individual uh, that's really just focused on legacy and it, who's a bit more high net worth uh, to, to be able to utilize that. But the other four definitely have very consistent use cases um, and that's it. So if you have any questions, comment in the comment section below. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell. That way you're notified every time I launch a new video. Till next time, have a blessed, inspirational day. We'll talk soon. See ya.